prophets and the scriptures. So this is um, an appearance of Jesus uh, shortly after the resurrection. So it's it's incredible what happens after the resurrection. Uh, um, as Jesus dies on the cross, at his death, reality changes, right? Everything goes dark. The sun is blotted out of the sky. Uh, essentially, time stops and everything changes, okay? The dead start to get up out of their graves and walk back in to the city. Uh, the veil is torn from the top to the bottom in the holiest of holies. Uh, the stone was rolled away, not to let Jesus out, so that we can see him Amen. Right, and, and bear witness uh, that he is, he is alive. Uh, and then uh, in the garden of the tomb, he meets and he greets and he commands uh, that they uh, go and tell the good news, uh, even though uh, the ladies thought that he was the gardener. We start to see some more of the, of the humor that uh, the Lord Jesus has. Um, and then he, he appears to these two disciples, uh, Cleopas and probably his wife, uh, Mary. Uh, let's pick up um, verse 13. Uh, Behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs, about seven miles. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Uh, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. That happened also in, in the garden of the tomb, right? That's why they thought he was the gardener. So something is happening. And this happens again uh, when um, uh, Peter and some of the other disciples are out fishing. They fish all night. They don't catch anything. And they see somebody on the shore, but they and they know they know it's Jesus, but they don't know it's Jesus. Um, and, and this this uh, is this pattern is, is repeated several times. Uh, and that's a that's an interesting study. If you want to write down Isaiah 50 verse six, uh, that may give you some insight as to why they could not recognize him. Um, And he said unto them, uh, so they're walking along, they're talking about what's just happened uh, in, in Jerusalem and the crucifixion. Uh, they're aware of the empty tomb, uh, and that, that gives you a lot to talk about. Uh, and Jesus says, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? Uh, their friend, their Lord, uh, the Messiah uh, has been executed, uh, and now they don't know where he is. Even though he told them where he would be, that he would meet them in Galilee, uh, they're, they're still not putting the pieces together, uh, and, and they're very downhearted. Um, and, and Jesus says, why, uh, why so glum? Uh, why are you sad? And, and one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, uh, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Um, you know, this, a lot of stuff has happened. Right? So everything went dark. There was a big earthquake. People were getting up out of the graves. And uh, his response is, where, 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 where have you been, buddy? Did, did, you, just, did you just get here? Um, and he said to them, what, what things? Right? So this is, this is Jesus' sense of humor. Right? Uh, all these things which have come to pass in these days. And Jesus says to them, what, what things? Right? Hadn't, hadn't heard it. Uh, and they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and had crucified him. Uh, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel, and beside all this, today's the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. Uh, and when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels. Uh, which said that he was alive. Uh, so there's, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and then we'll skip down to verse 25. And he said to them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to 
enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Uh, what a fabulous Bible study that would be uh, to, to enjoy the Lord Jesus himself, starting at Moses, through all the prophets, uh, concern all the things concerning himself. Um, so there's obviously a lot of a lot of prophetic uh, verses and scripture uh, that that Jesus would have uh, would have been teaching them. Uh, obviously, this is also important that Jesus Himself authenticates who wrote the Torah, Moses. And so there's a lot of a lot of scholarship that's going on that uh, you know they say multiple people wrote it and all these types of things. And um, thankfully, Jesus did not have the benefit of all that scholarship. Uh, he just lets us know, saves us the trouble, Moses right. wrote the Torah. Amen. Um, there, are, there are a lot of prophecies, over 340, that begin in Genesis. You'll find others in uh, Numbers, Second Samuel, Psalm, Psalms, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zechariah, Daniel, Micah. Um, everybody's probably familiar with Genesis uh, 3.15, so we think about Genesis being a prophetic book and the first prophecy uh, being... He shall bruise your heel, or you, should break, you shall break his head. Um, but I want to look at another, uh, we'll, we'll call it prophecy in Genesis. Um, in uh, Genesis chapter 5. So believe it or not, we're studying the book of Romans. But I, I think I always enjoy this. Genesis chapter 5. So who likes reading genealogies in King James English? <laughs> yeah, me neither, okay? But we're, we're going to do that here. Uh, this is basically the genealogy of Noah, okay? Uh, and we're going to kind of kind of go through and speed it up. Uh, so um, Adam had a son. His name was Seth. Uh, Seth had a son. His name was Enosh. Enosh had a son, Kenan. Kenan had a son, Mahalalel. Mahalalel had a son, Jared, who had a son, Enoch, uh, whose son was Methuselah, uh, who begat Lamech, who begat Noah. Okay. Um, Hebrew, Hebrew is it's, it's a beautiful, it's a poetic language. Words can have multiple meanings. Uh, but they all, they all kind of, they're all synonymous. They have similar roots. Um, so let's talk just a little bit about, um, well, why, why I had you read those, <laughs> I had you read those names. Um, so we're looking at the genealogy of Noah. Uh, Adama, Adam means man, okay? Um, Seth, his son, Seth means a, appointed. Okay. Enosh um, has has a meaning of, of mortality, of being frail, even miserable. Right. Um, its root is similar to what we might say is an incurable wound um, that's very grievous, uh, associated with a lot of woe, sickness, wickedness. Kind of tough to be named Enosh on the playground. Um, <laughs> His son Kenan. Kenan means sorrow, um, almost like a like an elegy. Okay, you think of a, a funeral song, a dirge. Um, Mahalalel means blessed or praised. When you see L appended to a word, that's referring to God. Okay, and so this, you know, blessed God, praise God, the blessed God is what his name. Uh, Jared uh, is from the verb yarad, meaning shall come down. Enoch, uh, Enoch means uh, teaching, uh, like a commencement address at a graduation, teaching. Okay. Um, and then, I don't want to miss one, Methuselah. Um, Muth means death, uh, and then shalak uh, means to bring or to send forth. So you put Methuselah together, and his death, sh 
shall bring. Amen. Lamech, uh, lamentation, despairing, okay, to lament. Uh, and then Noah, uh, Noah means to bring relief, comfort, rest, salvation. Okay. Um, so you put that together. Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah means man is appointed mortal sorrow but the blessed God comes down shall come down teaching his death shall bring the despairing rest so in the genealogy of Noah is hidden the gospel of Jesus Christ Amen. Um, and so when we when Paul tells the Jews uh, we won't get there tonight um, that you are without excuse was there all along. They knew their language. They knew their traditions. They knew these stories. They knew the covenant types. Uh, and so that's that's going to be what we're heading towards uh, shortly. Um, so so verse three um, concerning his son Jesus Christ. Uh, back in back in Romans uh, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Now we see four names of Jesus. Okay. Uh, he's, Jesus has about, or, or the Messiah, Christ, um, he, he has over 183 names in the Bible. Uh, so if you ever wondered at Christmas, right, the Christmas cards all say, uh, and his name shall be Emmanuel, and then you say, happy birthday, Jesus. And so well, I thought his name was going to be Emmanuel. Well, that's, that's, a, that's his role, that's his title. Um, there's about 100 and. Like, there's, like I say, there's over 183 uh, names. Um, if, you, if you Google uh, names of Jesus alphabetical, uh, this is three pages, a very small font of all the names of, of Jesus. Right? So, so he has a lot of names. Why does he have so, so many names? Because there's an awful lot written about him in the Old Testament. Because all the Old Testament is about Jesus. It's about him so that we will be able to authenticate uh, who he is. Uh, so we, here, here in Romans 1-3, we see that he is his son, uh, that his name is Jesus or Yeshua um, or you know, he who saves his people. Right? It's basically a, a synonym for uh, Savior. Um, or Joshua, it's also rendered as, as Joshua. Uh, he is the Christ, uh, which is Greek. For uh, Messiah, which is the Jewish term, um, and that's authenticated all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, in Matthew sixteen sixteen, Simon Peter answered and said, "Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God." He is Lord. Uh, he has authority. Uh, this is established uh, or echoed in John thirteen thirteen, uh, where Jesus is um, the the servant and washing the disciples' feet. So you call me master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I am. Uh, this is another wonderful story because Peter tells Jesus, well, you'll never wash my feet. I'm not going to let you do that. And Jesus tells him, what? Well, if you don't let me, then you'll, you'll have no part with me. And so Peter says, okay, well, wash my feet, my head, my hands. <laughs> Just get it all over there. Uh, Lord uh, in the Greek is kurios. In the ancient world, it referred to one who had absolute uh, authority and sovereign rule, so the emperor, okay, was considered both God and man, uh, who ruled in ultimate power as a king over a kingdom. Uh, and we know that Jesus is our coming king. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And, and this is all to say that all the Jews, um, they already knew that God had a son. Uh, they knew that uh, he would have to be uh, of, the, of the lineage of David. Um, and, and that he would have to come in person, in flesh. Right? Uh, Jeremiah 23, 5 is a touchstone verse for this, 5 and 6. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Amen. So you're saying they did know that God had a son, they just didn't believe Jesus was that son. Uh, He's not come yet for you. 
So some did. Uh, so some of the Pharisees did their homework, and they had to keep it very quiet. Um, the book of John talks about that they, they followed Jesus, they believed in Jesus, but they weren't going to say it. Other Jews did the same, uh, and they didn't really tell anybody because the Bible says they didn't want to get kicked out of the synagogue. They I think uh, of Nicodemus would be a prime example of that. Right. Um, had the relationship, but at that time kept it very, very at, at under the radar. radar. The midnight meeting. That's yes. As, that's as far as he was willing <laughs> yes. to, to go for, uh, for a significant period of time. If um, you, in other words, if you said, if the other side of Nicodemus said, well, that, that's the son of God right there, they would have probably stoned him to death. Well, that was the problem. That's what made everybody so angry. Yeah. Um, it's because uh, Jesus was, was declaring, and he did not fit. What, what they thought. He was not a military general. He did not come riding on a cloud in power. They didn't realize that there was going to be two phases. Uh, and they, they were, most of the people, so they were always afraid of the crowd. So they were going to try to arrest Jesus and they back off because they were afraid that they would, they would get killed themselves because of all of these believers. Um, and, you know, a lot, a lot of those were Jewish. Um, some would have some would have been Gentiles, but far more. So when we read the Gospels and we're looking at people who were discipled by Jesus, the crowds following Jesus, most of those were Jewish. And, and they're, they're oppressed, they're under Roman rule, and they, they recognize that he's, he's got the authentication. So that's what most of the Old Testament is. Basically, the, the, the authentication codes, how are you going to know when Messiah comes? Because there were a lot of false messiahs, um, and they, they, did not, they did not prosper well, um, and so Jesus, this would, have, this would have been a, the ideal time for for Jesus to get there because the Gentiles come in, they would have believed, they would have been more apt to believe in Him than the Jews would have. It would have been a difficult task. Wouldn't it? So, so when Paul talks about the the fullness of time, um, it's it's pretty incredible because you see, you look at the silent period in the Old Testament, so. Uh, after Malachi, the Old Testament goes silent, and, and basically the Old Testament is finished with John the Baptist. He's, he's basically the culmination of the Old Testament, prophesying, preparing the way for the Messiah. But during that, that 400-year silent period, uh, the ancient world experienced basically an explosion of culture and knowledge and philosophy. And, and that's what Paul is, is trying to point out, that there is... There is no better time for the one written about by the prophets to come than right now. This is another way that we know that Jesus was the Messiah. Um, um, so it, it, it doesn't surprise us that the God who created all things has, has good timing. Well, good timing. Um, Romans uh, 1, chapter, uh, verse 4 um, he was declared to be the Son of God with power, uh, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Uh, so he wasn't just declared in the scriptures. He wasn't just declared by people, you know, talking word of mouth. He was declared to be the Son of God by the most powerful mechanism, the most powerful demonstration there ever could be, the Holy Spirit and the resurrection from the dead. So a, a, good, a good point here is that Jesus did not come to make bad men good. Jesus came so that dead people can live. Amen. Uh, and that's, Amen. that is the message of the gospel. Uh, Paul is emphasizing this time, uh, like we were just talking about, where uh, he's, he made the son of David uh, at his birth. And, and this idea that uh, the Messiah would come from the seed of David and these prophecies and you know, that's, I, get, I get excited when uh, we're talking about prophecy and we're going from Revelation and looking back in the Old Testament. Uh, because in Genesis, God starts to lay out his plan uh, for reconciliation with humanity. And, and the devil can only know so much. He, only, he reveals a little bit at a time. And the more that God reveals, uh, he makes a covenant with Abraham. Okay, now Satan only has to focus on these people. He knows that the Messiah is going to come from the lineage of Abraham. So he starts to attack that family line. You've got this, 
you've got this very strange story of, of Jacob uh, and, and, and this illicit uh, affair with, with his daughter-in-law Tamar uh, and a child is born from that. Um, that's, that causes a problem. Um, and, and God makes a covenant with David. And so Satan says, okay, well, I, I, now I'm going to need to focus on this one line of Israel. Satan basically gets all of his information from the same place we do. Yes, yes. That's, that's why when uh, the disciples asked Jesus, so when are all these things going to come to pass? And he said, well, nobody knows the hour. Only the Father knows the hour uh, because the general is not going to reveal his battle plan. So he's not going to tell us because we're just soldiers and we blab about it and we put it in books and we, we tell everybody. Um, and so you talk about Antichrist. That's how we know that uh, ever, ever since uh, the, the crucifixion, uh, Satan has had somebody ready. In every generation, there's somebody who would rise to be the Antichrist. Because he doesn't know when it's going to happen. That's right. He doesn't know when the Father is going to tell the Son, uh, when the Harpazo, the rapture, is going to occur. So Satan has to have somebody in place. So that's why, he, that's why these people have been here all along. Like you said, there's lots of names down through there. But sure. they weren't the true man that Christ. Right. But if the rapture or whatever had happened at that time, they probably would have been. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's an interesting thing to, to think about that the rapture is going to happen and there's going to be this time of, of you know quasi peace. And you say, well, if all these people just disappear, how's that going to be peaceful? Uh, I I don't know. Maybe <laughs> something will happen and everybody has to stay in their home and not see each other for a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that would be scary. Yeah. When half your neighbor is dead and you don't know where they are. Or you don't know if the neighbors are gone. Or that's you know, right? Right. They just don't they just don't log into the Zoom call. And you, know, <laughs> yeah. you might be trying to figure that one out, so sure. it would be odd to go outside. Yeah, it just might be the internet's down. <laughs> and that's actually the rapture's taking place. <laughs> and you know, you know, we we can sit here and I and I know people's listening. In the parking lot, and I'm going to try to speak up from where I'm at, but we kind of jokingly look at that. But right now, as we speak in countries all over this globe, there there are people outside of their intermediate family member that's not seen a single solitary person in months. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're Christians, they say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and just one last thing about this lineage of David. So if, if you'll go back and you look at the, God declared a blood curse on Jeconiah and his line. Jeconiah messed things up so badly that God um, curses his bloodline. That's the line of David. That's right. So how, how do you, and, and so there's obviously a big party in, in hell uh, that day because Satan, he's, he thinks he's got God over a barrel. He thinks he's, it's, it's all wound up. Um, but what does God do? What's his solution? Jesus is the legal son of David um, through, through two different genealogies, but a virgin birth takes care of the blood curse. Jesus, through a virgin birth, the blood curse is circumvented. It's, it's made null and void. So continuing in, in verse 4, um, the Jews knew that, that God had a son. It had been revealed in the Old Testament. Um, we see this blending of flesh and divinity uh, revealed in the most powerful statement, that is the resurrection. Uh, it, it did happen. Uh, the his, historical data, you know, we know more about the resurrection of Jesus than we know about Julius Caesar. And nobody thinks, I don't, I don't know if Julius Caesar really existed. But as far as just historical, non-biblical, we're talking about extra-biblical, historical sources in antiquity, there is more about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus than many of these, Socrates, Plato, Julius Caesar, all of these different individuals in the ancient, ancient world, uh, which, is, which is a fun study in and of itself. Uh, but with the resurrection, his deity is proved beyond all doubt. Uh, he was the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. He died for the sins of the world. He was raised from the dead. Uh, it's this miraculous event of a substitutionary death and victorious resurrection. Victory over what? 
victory over sin, Satan, death, hell, the wrath of God, uh, that constitutes the gospel. And this was the gospel that Paul was preaching. Verse 5, uh, uh, by whom, he's talking about Jesus, we receive grace and apostleship uh, for, the, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Uh, obedience to the faith, so it's like the mission of the faith. Um, Jesus uh, is the source of this grace. He's, he's the source of the apostleship. He does the calling, okay? And, and his call warrants a response. So we're going to see this kind of echoed over and over again. Called to be, called to be, called to be. Um, Paul links this, this, his grace that he received first. First you get grace, uh, and then you were sent. Um, he reiterates his view of calling. Uh, God's grace is his provision to us, and that's what sustains Paul in his service and sustains us in our Christian life. Uh, obedience to the faith. So this echoes the Great Commission um, uh, to preach to all the worlds, baptize, teach them to obey all commandments, uh, and among all nations. Okay, so so this faith. It's not just trying to be obedient to laws, uh, it's, it's faith, uh, and it's for all the nations, including the Gentiles, um, because Jesus is for everybody, right? So everybody needs Jesus. Um, nations, uh, the word, Greek word is ethnos, from where we get our English word ethnicity. Um, everybody needs Jesus. Every tribe needs Jesus. Every name needs Jesus. Uh, every nation needs Jesus. Every individual needs Jesus. Every community needs Jesus. White people need Jesus. Black people need Jesus. Republicans need Jesus. Democrats need Jesus. Uh, poor people need Jesus. Rich people need Jesus. Educated people need Jesus. Educated people really need Jesus. Uh, <laughs> uneducated people need Jesus. Uh, everybody needs Jesus. Amen. Um, and, and he says, for his name. All right, so salvation by faith. Through grace leads us to exalt the name of Jesus and glorify God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, among whom, he's talking about the nations, are ye also called of Jesus Christ. Uh, so the, these, this group of Romans, they are Christians. Uh, the book of Romans is written uh, specifically to the saved uh, who, are, who are in Rome. Uh, and so to get, get the most benefit, so it's communicating the gospel, uh, but it's also building up that, that foundation. Um, and, and he emphasizes for, for all the nations, uh, called from among the nations, uh, because this is a little bit contradictory for the Jewish Christians, because it's, it's their God, it's their Messiah. And so they're, they have a little bit of a challenge to, uh, to accept that. Um, and, and as I said, Jesus does the work, he does the calling, he does the empowering, uh, he does the discipling, uh, he, you know, God does the election, so, and God's vote is the only one that, that counts. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, how are we doing on time? Yeah. About 10 people. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's do one more verse, um, verse 7. Uh, so he's writing to everyone who's in Rome, okay, so Rome is capital of the empire, uh, again, as we said, it's not, it's not the seat of Peter. Uh, Peter's not there. Paul doesn't go where other apostles have already been. Uh, he is writing to, to the Jewish Christians, the Greek Christians. Um, beloved of God. What, what a wonderful, wonderful title. Beloved, not just beloved of Paul, but God loves you. So these, these Roman Christians are in, in their home churches. Uh, they're being read this message, and Paul wants them to know that they are beloved of God. Um, better to be a, a beloved servant of God uh, than the king of the entire world. Uh, and called saints. Saints. Um, so there's two kind of people in this world. There's the saints and there's the ants. Okay? Um, so we, we, want, we want to be saints. He's called, he, if you have responded to the call, you are a saint. Okay? Um, and that, that is a person who, who has responded to the call, who has trusted in Christ, uh, and, and they are separated. I remember Paul was separated unto the gospel. Well, saints are, saints means holy, uh, so congratulations, and separated, 
right? Separated from, from what? What are we separated from? From sin, death, hell, and the wrath of God. That stuff cannot touch us anymore. Okay. Anymore. It cannot touch these things. Um, and it's not by good works. Uh, we respond by believing. Uh, and um, and that is the office that, that we, we occupy. That is the mission that we have. Uh, that, that's what allows us to benefit from, from God's grace and receive that grace. Uh, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, so grace first, again, um, this is a Greek term, um, and, and then peace, which is more of a Hebrew term, right? Think shalom. Um, grace, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and this, show, this peace, so, so the grace, it's, it, it saves and equips and empowers us. And peace, this is the peace that only God can give. Um, and it's not just like a subject, subjective inner peace that you know, people can get when, when just nothing bad has happened that day. But it's, this is a peace that means a cessation from all hostilities. We were rebellious against the king of the universe, and now he has declared us to be at peace with him. We are reconciled. It's both the absence of war and the presence of blessings. Uh, it's, a very, it's a very rich, full word. It means redemption and restoration and healing and wholeness when everyone and everything is brought under the rule of Jesus, uh, the Prince of Shalom. So this is not just a greeting. It's not just Paul saying, hi, right? Uh, this grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to suggest something to you. And then we'll, we'll close. So he says, God, the, God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's missing? The Holy Spirit. I'm going to suggest to you that the Holy Spirit is right there. That the Holy Spirit is the grace and the peace. Um, so C.S. Lewis talked about the Holy Spirit as, as the person who is in response to God the Father and God the Son uh, in this mutual relationship of love. So have you ever have you ever visited a family and the family were so so sweet and peaceful and godly that there was just something about that house, there was a spirit there? Or you think about a military unit where uh, there's there's this camaraderie uh, and this mutual appreciation. Uh, everybody is, is there for everybody else. They're serving together. Uh, that, that spirit that is there in that, that unit. Um, that's kind of what C.S. Lewis is talking about. Uh, this relationship that God the Father and God the Son have uh, is, is fully glorified and magnified in the person of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is not like a, you know, some electricity or or something like that. The Holy Spirit is a, is a person uh, who's doing most of the writing. And, and when the Holy Spirit refers to himself, he, he never does it directly. Never. He's always sort of incognito. That's, that's when the Holy Spirit is writing about himself. And so he encodes his presence there just a little bit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. So I'll, I'll close us in prayer if that's okay, and I'll stick around if anybody has any questions after. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for appointing this time uh, that we can be here to read your word, Lord, yes. to open our minds, ready our hearts, receive your words, that we can be equipped and empowered, Lord, uh, to, to fulfill our mission, to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just pray, pray that you would bless everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, uh, give us grace peace and mercy uh, until we meet back again, if that be your will. May your kingdom come and will be done, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.